Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Suited Shootist. Uh, as you can tell, I'm continuing in my series of how I personally choose to carry in various uh, levels of dress, and I decided to forego the cheesy kind of on-the-nose James Bond intro. Um, you can also tell from the background that I'm working on trying to improve the production value, but if you're still seeing green, uh, it means that I'm presently swearing at my laptop and probably drinking. Uh, so I uh, appreciate you guys sticking with me through that. Anyways, in the final portion of the series, I wanted to touch on how I prefer to carry things. Um, you know, again, when I am in either a formal environment or something that's going to be a true either business formal or black tie like this, uh, I'm in a position where I'm either getting invited to a wedding every year or two, uh, you know, sometimes there are some black tie optional things that my wife and I get invited to. So this is somewhat pertinent to me. Might not be for you, but it still applies even if you're in just a traditional suit and tie. Um, I'm not going to go into too much depth on the stuff that I already covered. The pepper spray, still there, same place. Uh, generally, same thing with the flashlight. If it's not in the hip pocket, then I will tuck it into my waistband if... I'm in a position where I'm wearing a vest that covers that. Um, vests are a great cover garment. Even if you're going with something a little bit more casual, you can wear it and everything from dark denim up. So it's wonderfully flexible uh, in that regard. So one thing to keep in mind is that with a vest, you do want it to fit fairly close to the body. And um, so you don't want anything too bulky that you're trying to cram under there. Uh, this is not a proper tuxedo vest, as I'm sure somebody is going to call me out on. Mine is currently at the tailor getting altered. So this uh, is just kind of functioning as a stand in. So let's get into it. Um, really, the only things that change from what I've touched on previously to, <coughs> excuse me, um, to this is how and where I carry the firearm. Um, and also uh, a, a different addition as well. As you all know, especially if you've seen the previous videos, I'm a huge fan of the Raven Concealment Pocket Shield. Now, admittedly, a small pocket gun in a pocket shield will absolutely work in something like this. Uh, but if you need something that is a little bit more discreet, or if you need that pocket space, because um, generally speaking, if you're dressed like this, then your date is probably not only pocketless, but um, generally relegated to a much smaller purse than she normally carries. So you get stuck kind of serving as the extension. So you might need more of your pocket space than you do typically. So I do still pocket carry something. This is something that I'm still playing around with. Um, it's a newer addition, but on my offside, I've gone to a pocket shield with a Shivworks push dagger. Uh, it is slim and low profile, even more so than the, um, than the little kel 32. And so it is a nice kind of discreet option and it is very readily accessible. I like it in the offside for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, I'm less dexterous with my left hand and this is much more of just kind of a grab and go thing. And it's a lot less obvious if you're in a social setting where you're either having to shake hands or what have you to have an offhand in a pocket than not. Um, so just a couple of little things there. When it comes to the firearms, really there's two, th two that I'll, I'll go to. Um, for the longest time, I went very old school with it. And I just went with a J-frame with that Barami hip grip on it. And literally all this does is it rides over the waistband of whatever pants I'm wearing. Certainly not the most secure thing on the planet. So that's something that you need to factor in. Um, if you go grounded, it's you, you're, you're going to lose it. So this is not super secure. But again, my thinking on this is if I am working in a situation where I'm dressing like this, there's a lot of people and it's not necessarily going to be the same kind of targeted, singled out situation as it would be if I'm walking through a parking lot or some other transitional space. So 
in my thinking at least, now again, nobody can predict what your gunfight's going to look like. This is just kind of how I've wargamed it thus far based on the social situations that I've been in. If something starts coming up, arguably there's going to be a little bit more advanced notice of a problem that you might have to resolve. So there, there's not, you're going to have a slightly larger reactionary gap. So something like this is a viable option, not necessarily the best option, but definitely a viable one. Um, so this is what I did for a fairly long period of time. Uh, and I'm only shifting it to my back pocket so that I can actually get at the other uh, choice that I will sometimes go to, which is going to be a slightly more serviceable handgun in something like smart carry. Uh, so to give you guys a better idea of what that looks like, it does ride below the waistline. It's basically a, a almost a cod piece and it's just kind of a kangaroo pouch that the pistol fits into. The entire thing rides below the waistline. Uh, so that is something that you're going to have to factor in. The reason why I like it with suits and tuxedos especially is because at, with tuxedos at least, there's no belt. There's the only tension around your waist is the tension of the trousers themselves. So because I've got the weight of everything hanging off my shoulders, I can afford to have the waistline of the trousers not quite as snug. So it's a lot easier to snake my hand in and retrieve a pistol. Um, there are those folks who will take a Kydex insert and, uh, and screw it into the kangaroo pouch, which is certainly not a bad idea. Um, definitely a, a good option because it gives you a little bit more security and uh, better trigger guard coverage. There are also going to be potentially some, um, some new options coming out as well. Uh, I don't want to go into any detail on it because the folks that are working on them are doing a super, uh, super good job, both in development as well as in the marketing. But there are potentially some new solutions on the horizon for this that uh, once I get my hands on, I'm going to touch on as well. So this is really it. Um, other than that, like I said, nothing changes. The pepper spray is still on the right. The flashlight is still either in my left pocket or if I need to free up pocket space, I'll move it up to the waistband. And for medical, I'll either, again, put a tourniquet in the business card pocket or uh, with something like this, I, you could probably get away with an ankle medical kit as well if you chose. So the really the entire idea of this is just to show some of the options that are out there. You know your circumstance better than anybody else. So you're going to be able to figure of these what is truly most suitable to you. Now, again, the drawbacks to stuff like this is that it's not nearly as accessible um, as your traditional everyday carry. The question is, in those circumstances, does it actually need to be? I can't answer that question for you. Uh, so just something to to kind of to kind of look at. Last thing that I want to leave you with is um, you may have noticed, may have not. I, I'm having a little bit of fun with the cufflinks. Uh, I actually picked these up from Bullet Bouquet, and I got to say, I'm actually fairly impressed with them. Um, it's a, a fully expanded hollow point, and they're fairly well finished. Word of caution, it's still an expanded hollow point, so when I was putting the jacket on, I did feel it snag the lining of the sleeve a little bit, but um, I kind of like if you wanted to add something that is... It's certainly not subtle, but it's not overtly in your face either. I think that these are a, a great little option uh, if you want to kind of signal your tribe a little bit. And if you end up stuck in a monkey suit like this and it's really not your speed, it's something that you could do to kind of show a little bit of your personality without being overt or, or crass about it. So um, I've got those in my Amazon store. I'll, I'll link it down there as well as the, uh, the, the smart carry options and the pocket shields. So check that all out and let me know what you guys think. I'd be very interested to hear what your solutions are to carrying in something like this. Obviously, 
the go-to that everybody thinks of is the shoulder holster, which is certainly serviceable. You're going to need to get your jackets tailored around it. And um, as you can tell, this is not exactly the uh, the most breathable outfit on the planet. And so generally, especially if I'm dancing, the jacket's coming off. So that now, for me at least, makes the shoulder holster a, a slightly less viable option. But I'm still good to go. So let me know what you think. Put, you know, put it in the comments. Share this around. I always love everybody's feedback. And uh, again, I really appreciate the subscribes. Um, hope everybody has a great week. And I will catch you all next time.